fact with the background. So I went to CNU, Central Michigan. Um, my degree is in public relations, marketing, journalism. Um, and I sort of fell into fundraising because uh, I like people, like talking to people. Um, a lot of fundraising is writing and communicating and you know telling people your story or the story of your organization. And so I realized that I was sort of good about that. And also, personally, I am like very committed to um, causes and working in communities, specifically I'm from Flint, and so working in Flint and then moving down here to Detroit, I'm really passionate about uh, providing opportunities to people who don't have all the resources they need, mainly because of the color of their skin. So that is something that's personally very important to me, and so that's why I work at Life and Life. Um, So the blocks that you guys work on, yeah. does that have to do with home renovation at all, or is it just like in the project? That's a great question. So um, so we actually used to do home repairs. We don't do them anymore. But prior to the pandemic, so from 20, so let me back up a little bit. So before 2014, I sort of mentioned that we were in the suburbs, right? Life remodeled from 2010 until 2014. Our sort of project was that we built a house from the ground up in six days. Remember that show, Extreme Makeover? Oh, yes. Yeah, so we used to do that. So we would show up on um, like a Monday, we'd bring 1,000 volunteers, and we'd build a house for a family in six days. And then in addition to that, we'd also provide the family with financial counseling and with uh, personal counseling, and we would provide them with a bunch of resources because a lot of those families that used to get those houses on that show would lose them like within months because they didn't have the resources they need to keep them up. You can't all of a sudden get a multi million dollar house and expect them to pay the bills, right? Like it was just crazy. So we would build modest homes in six days and then give those away to families. And one day, uh, one person who was uh, that we were building a house and the neighbor across the street, this was, this was in Detroit. Um, I think it was actually in Highland Park. And um, a neighbor came out across the street and was like, it's really cool that you're building that house, but that doesn't help me, it doesn't help anybody else in the city. It's like, you're only helping one family. And it was kind of a wake up call for our um, CEO. And so then in 2014, that's when we stopped just building the houses. We moved to Detroit, and that's when we started doing the three projects that were the six day project. Um, and then we would, renovate homes with new roofs, um, windows, or furnaces, because those are the three things that allow people to stay in their homes, their quality of life affecting. Um, and so we would get the roofs, um, the furnaces, and the windows donated from large companies, and then we would have volunteers who were licensed come in and install them. Um, so we used to do home repairs, we stopped doing the home repairs um, because we wanted to put more of our efforts towards the buildings, now that we were starting to own these large school buildings. Um, so in addition to the home repairs, the six day project, the blight removal, we clear blight from the front yards of vacant properties. So we trim everything that's overgrown. We kind of get rid of everything that blocks the windows, the doors or whatever. Um, and then we mow um, the properties of residents and then we mow vacant lots and then we pick up trash and take care of illegal dumping and all of that because <coughs> the majority of the illegal dumping, dumping in Detroit is done by people that don't live in Detroit. So we go and pick up. Yeah, you know, we get asked this a lot because affordable housing and homelessness is a significant problem, right, in the city of Detroit. Um, and so we are like, that's the one thing that we really don't do is affordable housing or help homeless folks. However, the programs that we have at the building, um, a lot of individuals who might identify as homeless do participate in our programs. Um, and so we don't do anything like that, but we will refer them to someone who does sort of help in that area. But it's like the one spot that we really, it's not our sweet spot. And a lot of people have asked, well, why don't we just acquire these vacant school buildings and turn them into apartments and affordable housing, right? But that's really just not something that we can do because as a nonprofit, that's something a for-profit could do. As a nonprofit, we can't <laughs> afford to do it. We break even on the, you know, the model that we have right now. So that's a great question. So um, I know you said that there were four schools that were renovated. Yeah. Right. And as soon as you stop. Right. Yep. So, but the two schools that are being that are going to be operated out of are going to be the um, third 
two mm-hmm. school and then the uh, one the Catholic school, right? Correct. So what happens to the other school? So Cody, Osborne, and Denby are all still operating school. Right. Yep, so Cody, um, so I wish I had the slides, I could try to remember back, but like like I said, we did things like football fields, basketball courts, we renovated classrooms, we made it so like the schools had this sort of, they had a lot of the things that suburban schools would have that Detroit schools could never have because of the funding, right? So like we put in a firefighter academy in one of the schools, we put in um, a new home economics room, we did a teacher's lounge in another one of the schools. So those are still currently operating, um, and we did that because, this, I can sort of back up for a second, in 2014 when we decided we were gonna come work with BPSCD, our CEO just cold called BPSCD. It was like, hey, how do we help? And so we had a meeting at Cody High School. Um, they said, you know, you can come do whatever you want. We're not gonna really help you because we don't have any money. BPSCD was in bankruptcy, right, under emergency manager at the time. And so um, they said, do what you want. We're not gonna help you. And we just kind of came up with this plan after talking to um, students and so that's how our relationship with BPSED started. So we did the three years, Cody, Osborne, Denby. We wanted to renovate Central High School, which is the one that's right next to Durfee. Um, and then they told us that they were gonna move all the kids that were in Durfee, which is K through eight, next door to Central. So now Central is K through 12, because the school was built for 4,000 students. Now K through 12, they have less than 1,000, more like 750 or something right now, K through 12. So that's when BPSED approached us and said, that building's gonna sit empty, it's beautiful, do you want it? We said no at first, and then we're talked into it, and now this is our whole model. So that's our goal now is we'll have Durfee, we'll have the old Winans or Dominican, and then we hope to do this throughout the city of Detroit because there are so many vacant school buildings and so many neighborhoods that are dealing with blight. Um, and then also we would hope that we can sort of do this across the country because there are lots of communities of color that have significant needs and we would want to do that in places like Baltimore, Chicago, uh, Indianapolis, you know, kind of all over um, to work with the issue. And Detroit is a city that deals with blight in a way that other cities don't really as much, maybe Baltimore um, and a couple other places, but not as many people have as much blight. So the six day project and all that work might not move, but the Opportunity Hub model we think can go all, all across the country. Hopefully it 